Hey guys, you want to see how to make a self-cleaning duck pond? You're about to find out. The first thing I want you guys to know about the self-cleaning duck pond is that my idea was inspired by Justin Rhodes. Uh, it was inspired by his Everflow watering system. Look here guys, look at this, look at this nasty water. It's impossible to keep clean with these backwashing ducks. And now look, gravity fed water. So the way Justin did this was he went ahead and he ran a hose from his pond which sits at a higher elevation from where he wanted his water. They went ahead and got all the air out and they siphoned it down and it keeps that water flowing. And therefore in the winter, it prevented the water from freezing because we all know that moving water is a lot slower to freeze than water that stands still. So that's where I got this idea. And I thought, well, that must be nice to have a pond at a higher elevation, but there's not very many people that have that. And it got me thinking, do I have a water source at a higher elevation than where I want it? And that's where my spring comes in. And if you guys will check the last video that I made, I'll put the link down in the description below. Uh, that would be a good video to watch before this to see exactly how my spring works. So anyway, you can see behind me the duck pond. Uh, we're going to go ahead, we're, we're going to go to the beginning and we're going to go there now. Alright guys, we're back in the woods. Does this look familiar behind me? Uh, you can see here that I have my spring pipe coming down here and my water pouring into this bucket. If you guys haven't seen the video before where I showed my spring, my spring, the tank that this water comes out of is a thousand gallons. And what this pipe is, is the overflow to that pipe. So the only way I get a single drop of water out of this pipe is if I have a thousand gallons in that tank. So this is not taking from my water source at all. So I didn't explain that real clear in the previous video. And I just wanted you guys to know that. You can see that my water flow here is a lot more substantial than it was before. In fact, this little bucket here can no longer keep up. So you may be asking, okay, what's the deal with the bucket? Well, I have a piece of screen over the top and that's just to prevent any debris or anything like that from getting in. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. It leaves. Anyway, here is the bucket. And the bucket that I use is a feed bucket that you would use to put on a fence post or something like that. You can get this at any feed store, tractor supply, rural king. And the reason I use this bucket is because it has a flat side. Do you guys remember in the rain barrel video when I talked about the bulkhead? The key to these rain barrels are these little pieces right here. These are called bulkheads. So what I did was I took the bulkhead and I put it on the flat side because obviously if you were to try to put that bulkhead on a round surface, it will more likely leak. So I went ahead and I drilled a hole in this bucket and attached the bulkhead. And you can see I ran a piece of wall pipe that runs down my hill into the bucket. And this all runs down, and I will show you that here in a minute. So the key to this is I have a water source that is uphill, and I am using gravity to run this water downhill. And you can see how well that fixing that clog and that pipe is helping. This bucket can no longer keep up, which is fine because it just runs down here with the rest of the spring that is running down behind me. So anyway, we are going to follow this pipe on down and work our way to the duck pond. Right here I come to the township road and I went ahead and just ran the pipe straight through the culvert. All right, I'm here on the road and I go under the road into this brushy stuff and then I route the hose on down. So anyway, so at this point the, the, the pipe is all gravity feed down the hill and you can see from here once I get down to the road you can see you can see the fence of my chicken coop way back there in the back behind the red building. So 
Anyway, we have to run that pipe. I ran that pipe all the way down there. So I came down across the road through the culvert and I buried this pipe straight down through here. Okay, I ran this pipe clear into here, made the turn, and ran it straight up in here into my pond. You see how far we have come? That is all a slightly upgrade, and all it is is gravity that runs down here to the pond. Now I originally set up my rain barrels on the gutter system, and I had an afterthought after I went ahead and did this. So what I did, was I went ahead and I put a T in the line underground right around here. And instead of running my line this way to the pond, I, I teed it and ran it perpendicular this direction. And I'll show you what I did. So right here, this is all underground. Went ahead and turned it, come right in here to my rain barrel, and you can see my black pipe that runs up and into my barrel. And the reason I did that is even at this height, I'm still well below my original starting point, and the water pressure will come up here. And let me show you how I rigged the pond up. You see here, right where the water comes out on the pond, I have a ball valve. That way I can go ahead and shut this ball valve and stop the water to my pond. And then, once I valve that off, I can go ahead and I can open this valve. Now I got water running into my rain barrel, you can hear it. And now I have water going directly from my spring, filling up my rain barrel, no rain required. So it's nice to have, especially in the middle of the summer when the when you may go long stretches without rain. And it's also nice, you know, because that water is stagnant and it's nice to cycle that water out every once in a while, you know, to make sure make sure they all have nice fresh water. So that is one thing I did as an afterthought. If I would have thought about this first, I may not even have hooked up these rain gutters because I get a lot of dirt and staining from the trees that run down when the rain runs through the leaves down into this barrel where I could have just filled it up with the spring the whole time. All right you guys you see here my pond this my pond I believe I paid eleven dollars for it at Menards it's a landscaping leaf tote uh, I went ahead and I just bought that plastic tote I run my water into it and I built this frame to sit it down in nice and tight into and then I went ahead and I put the gravel around the pond just to try to hold back some of the mud that they're going to create. Because these, these ducks and the geese, they play in this constantly. And without this gravel, it would just be a giant mess. Hey there, Mr. Turkey. Hey there. But anyway, I just wanted to uh, get this video out because it's been pretty highly requested. As you can see here that most of my animals actually use the pond to drink from here and I'm telling you this water is good it is quality let me show you this water here is crystal clear high quality and I'd have no problem drinking it myself Tastes like just like the water that comes out of the tap. <sighs> oh, that tastes good on a hot day. One last thing I want to show you on my pond is you can see I have another bulkhead put onto the side of the pond, which then allows the water to overflow on out into the pond. You can see here that it does occasionally clog up. Uh, you get feathers or something clogged up in there, it will overflow occasionally. But, uh, Anyway, at least it gets it out away from 
the chicken coop and prevents a giant mess. And you see how clear this water is? There's a few rocks down there in the bottom. Now obviously when they're playing in it, it's pretty muddy. But it just takes no time at all. I've never cleaned this thing out, ever. I've never cleaned it. And look how clear it is. There's a few rocks down there in the bottom. And uh, it just it just self cleans. This water flows in, the dirty water flows out. And the chickens drink out of it, the ducks drink out of it, they all drink out of it. And another thing too, if you notice, the water is moving. And just like in Justin Rhodes' video, because the water is moving, it takes a lot for this to freeze. We went through that polar vortex and this is all the worst that it got. Check this out. My poor pond. Poop all over it. But if you look really close, the water is still flowing. Pretty amazing. You can see that the water is constantly moving. But I normally don't have to worry about getting water out to the chickens and the ducks because they have this water. Anyway, I hope this answered a lot of questions of yours. Uh, it's been kind of a topic that people have been wanting to hear about. Um, I just encourage you guys to use your imagination and think, well, what is there something I could do to create something like this because that's the worst thing about ducks is replacing their water over and over and over because they make a mess out of it all the time so a lot of people use kiddie pools and stuff and anybody that has ducks though within a few hours that water is disgusting and so just use your imagination uh, and try to think of something because I know this won't work on everybody's property it's kind of a unique situation I have here on mine but I just encourage you to just maybe you can find a little bit of inspiration from this and put this into use on your own property, your own homestead, or your own farm. And anyway, guys, if you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. I greatly appreciate that. Um, it, this has been fun, and I enjoyed making these videos, and I hope to bring a lot more to you. But anyway, I hope you guys have a good day, and thanks for watching.